Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. This one, I got this question from Douglas. Uh, it's a comment on YouTube. So I want to go through. It's a little longer, but there's some stuff in here that I want to pull out. So I'm going to go through this. So it says, I've been feeling somewhat burnout lately, but not for the reasons you've discussed here. I'm more of an intermediate level programmer who is still attempting to develop the skills I think necessary to be able to make web development an actual career. I've done much of the introductory work in learning the constructs of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, etc. via many courses I've taken both in school and online. I've worked through numerous problems and case studies successfully through this instruction. But what I haven't learned yet is how to actually solve new problems I may be faced with. I suppose I haven't yet learned how to think like a real programmer, how to analyze a problem, dissect it, lay out the steps necessary to solve it, and then write the code to do so. In short, I'm pretty good at regurgitating code, but not too good using what I know to solve new problems that I haven't previously encountered. I love coding, but I'm questioning whether or not I have what it takes to bring together useful projects I may be tasked to do. And if I can't, what I'm doing is mostly just a mental exercise instead of a path to actually making a living. How did you progress from the learning stage to the problem solving stage? So when I read this, it, it seems obvious to me, you know, just as long having gone through this, as long as I've done this, that there's there's sort of something missing in, in all of this. And it is something that, uh, you know, when you when you go from the learning stage to doing this professionally, getting paid to do it, actually becoming someone who uh, solves problems for other people, it's missing for most people. And, you know, it's something that you got to figure out. Uh, and, and you have to actually take some time and sit down and think about. And so I'm going to talk about uh, exactly what that is in this episode. So that and sort of the idea is when you insert that in there, then the rest sort of it becomes really clear and obvious. And so what seems like you don't know how to do this particular thing right now, you probably actually do know how to solve problems and analyze them and so forth. You're just missing something that comes before that, that once you have that, then the rest of it will take care of itself. That's been my experience of it anyway. So anyway, this episode, I want to get into all that. Of course, before that, I do want to let you know about Udemy's latest uh, promotion that they're running on their site right now. It's sort of like a St. Pat- Patrick's uh, Day deal. Anyway, you can get uh, most of their courses, all their participating courses anyway, for just ten ninety nine over on the site. So courses that normally you know they retail for $100, $200 you can get for just ten ninety nine. Now these first few days are uh, sort of an affiliate only promotion, meaning if you just go to their site right now, you're not going to see the ten ninety nine deal. Uh, you actually have to go through an affiliate link. Now I happen to be an affiliate of of theirs, so if you use the link johnmorrisonline.com slash march, then that will you know redirect to where you need to go and trigger the deal for you over there on the site. So again, that's an exclusive through that link. You know, you can't just go to the site and and see the deal. So use johnmorrisonline.com slash March in order to do that. Now, of course, as an affiliate, I will earn a small commission. Uh, If you do that, no extra cost to you. The course costs the same, but uh, I earn a little commission. So you also be help helping to support the show. So I'd appreciate that. All right. So with that out of the way, let's let's sort of dive into this. So the first point that I want to make, and really, if there's nothing else you take away from this video, this is what I want you to get. I believe problem solving is the most important skill you can learn as a developer. And the analogy that I would use is, let's say for a second that you were a guide and your job was to guide people for whatever reason from one point to another. Now, it could be easy to get caught up in being, you know, things that aren't necessarily related to to getting from point A to point B, meaning, you know, being really efficient. So maybe you could, you would focus on getting people there really fast, or maybe you would focus on the experience. So you take lots of breaks. So when you took breaks, you'd have like sort of these, you know, really nice meals that people could, could have. And you just make sort of this real, uh, you have this real sort of uh, good experience for people or, Oh, you get you maybe get uber focused on the mechanics of you know the different gear you got to wear or whatever. But if you consistently, as a guide, take people to the wrong place, you don't get them from point A to point B, or you get lost along the way or whatever. You're not going to make it as a guide very long because your fundamental job as a guide is to 
know how to get someone from one point to another, to know the route and to be able, the reason they're hiring you is to get to consistently get them to the spot that they want to go to. Everything else is sort of just icing on the top. Well, as developers, it's very similar. Our fundamental job is to solve problems and the applications we build, the code we write, the languages we use, all of that is secondary to the primary job, which is to solve problems. So when we go to build an application, I think this is something, this is a, a shift in the way you think about what you do that can have a tremendous impact on the success that you have when you really get this. But what I, I think a lot of people, the focus they have is sort of this idealistic view of, I want to build the next big thing. And so they spend a lot of time racking their brain about what's something cool and innovative and new that I can build. And that's fundamentally the wrong approach because ultimately, again, what we do is solve problems. Instead, what your focus should be on is what problems can I solve? You know, who who's having a particular problem? What is that problem? What, what's a solution I can develop or what are the solutions that are out there and aren't necessarily doing a great job? What can I do better, et cetera, et cetera. It's a focus on problems and solving problems that will sort of open up this whole world of ideas of things that you could then build. And when you build your application and it has a focus on solving a particular problem, it'll be an application that more and more people want to use because they have that particular problem. So is less a focus on thinking in terms of solutions and more a focus in in terms of thinking on problems. It's the number one thing uh, that if you can make that mental switch and get good at doing as a developer, you can sort of write your own check because uh, you just get you 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 get really good at the fundamental thing that that you're sort of tasked with doing now. So again, if there's if there's nothing else you take from this video, take that. However. You know, of course, we want to get into talking about how do you actually become a better problem solver. So there's often this sort of idea, and I sort of read it in 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 this question of, you know, I guess I haven't yet learned how to think like a real programmer. And so there's sort of this insinuation there of like if you, as you learn how to code, becoming a problem solver will just sort of naturally happen. And that's not really how it works because Problem solving is something that exists outside of the code. And that, that's the next sort of point that I want to make. Uh, learning how to solve problems or, or think ne not necessarily being good at solving problems is not a coding problem. It's a, it's a bigger, sort of more global problem than that because we as human beings solve problems all sorts of ways that have nothing to do with code. I mean, being a ditch digger, you're solving a problem. Someone needs a ditch and they don't want to dig it themselves. So you are solving their problem for them. It has nothing to do with code. Something as simple and basic as that is still problem solving. So again, it's something that's more global. And it's sort of like what I when I talk about, you know, when people learn how to code and they want to go into then getting paid how to code. And a lot of times developers can fall into this trap of, well, if I'm really, really good at code, the work will just come. And I, I always make the point that they're separate skills. You have to learn how to use Upwork or you have to learn how to build a website and, and get traffic and market yourself to do freelance work off your own website. Or you have to learn how to apply for jobs, how to write a resume, how to uh, interview, how to work within the company to advance your career. Although all these things are skills that are separate from the tech skills that have nothing to do with the PHP or the CSS or whatever that you write. Problem solving is the same thing. It's a skill. It's a skill that can be learned. It's a skill that has to be learned. And in order to do it, it takes practice. So you're not just going to write code and get good at problem solving. You have to get good at problem solving. You have to directly practice that. So you have to seek out problems and then work at figuring out how to develop solutions. And you're not naturally going to be good at it. It's not something that you're, because you know a bunch of, of code, you're just going to be able to sit down and do this. That's not how it works. It's a skill on its own. It's like those first days when you started writing PHP code. It was tough. It didn't make sense. You know, you had a lot of things that you had to sort of just get your head around. 
conceptually to be able to, it's the same thing with problem solving. It's a separate skill. The code is secondary to it. And you want to focus on it first. And when you develop a picture of the end result of the solution that you want to develop, then that's when the code sort of starts to make sense and 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 comes into play. So that's a sort of second point that I want to make is that problem solving is a skill that you have to practice on its own, separate from sort of the coding. Right? It's its own thing. The final point that I want to make then, and the thing that I sort of talked about at the beginning that's missing, that I can sort of tell is missing from all of this, is you know, we talk about problem solving and finding problems. And when you make that switch from thinking in terms of solution to thinking in terms of problems and realize it's a skill that you have to practice, and you're like, okay, let's go find some problems. And it's sort of sort of vague. And you're like, I'm trying to reach out into this sort of ether of, of you know, uh, of the world out there and figure out what problems are out there for me. It becomes sort of difficult to be like, well, where do I go? What do I do? How do I find problems? Do I just, you know, and this is where we, we, we sort of get back to this topic of passion because the reality is you can solve any problem that's out there. And, uh, you know, the fundamental thing that you do as a developer and as a business owner is solve problems, but you get to choose which problems you solve. And you get to choose who you solve them for. And so it's important that you pick something that you're going to be naturally passionate about. Because that's what's going to give you the energy to actually execute. To actually listen to people. To care enough to be able to, to want to hear what they have to say. To listen to their problems. To, to connect with it on an emotional level. And that is going to give you the stuff and the data that you need in order to develop a solution that really helps these people. So it's ultimately caring about other people that is the, that is the spark for being a good problem solver. You have to care about their problems. You have to give a shit. That's the, that's the spark. That's the thing that's missing. So how do you do that? You figure out who you want to solve problems for. Now, this is the part where a lot of developers, we're, we're sort of introverted and we sort of close ourselves off and, and, you know, people start talking about all this sort of emotional lovey-dovey stuff and we get a little, mm. you have to open yourself up to that. That's where the passion comes from. That's where the, that's the spark of creativity. It comes from you caring about the people you want to help. And I'll just sort of use myself as uh, my as an example. So, you know, one of the reasons why I get on and do this, why you know, I I love doing the podcast and and putting out as much information as I can and, and all this is because I love helping people that are entrepreneurial sort of minded, and I think developers are very much that. Even if they're working at a tech job, we kind of developers always tend to sort of have a side hustle or have something that they're thinking about building in the future or whatever. We, we all tend to be a little bit entrepreneurial minded. And so, you know, I found a real connection with a lot of people in this community in that sense. And the reason I'm passionate about that is because, you know, I've talked about this before. My dad was a business owner growing up. I would go from school to my dad's shops, not home. And so, so business and entrepreneurship and all that was just sort of a part of my childhood for as long as I can remember. And so, and I've seen my dad struggle. I've seen everything that he went through. And so I sort of have a, a, a personal emotional connection that to people that are going through that, that same sort of uh, experience. And so that's what makes me passionate about those people. That's what makes me care about those people because I see my dad uh, in every one of you and, and I want to help you. I care. And that's, again, that is what you need. That is the spark. So the first thing after watching this video that you should do is you should start thinking about who. Don't worry about, see, forget practical for a second. Forget, oh, what what's the problem in the solution? Forget all of that for a second. Who do you care about most? Maybe, you know, for some reason you're very passionate about you know, helping children. Or, you know, another one that I could be passionate about is, you know, my dad was in a car wreck and he's what's considered a high functioning paraplegic. So he's not he's not paralyzed from the neck down, but he's sort of like numb from the neck down. So it's it's a little different. But anyway, I could be really passionate about helping people in that same sort of situation. Or, 
you know, maybe it's artists. You know, my little brother is sort of a kind of a quasi hippie. And so when he does sort of freelance work, he tends to help people that are artists or musicians, painters, uh, that sort of thing. So maybe that's who you're passionate about helping. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What matters is you figuring out who it is and then having the courage to recognize that no matter how impractical helping those people might seem to be, that's where the best opportunity for you to have success is. Because A, if you're focusing on solving problems, then you're going to be doing your fundamental job and you're going to be providing people with what they want. And B, it's going to give you the energy, the caring, the passion to be able to actually execute, to listen to what they have to say, to care, to want to solve the problem for them. That's the source of all of this. So when you do that, then the action to me and in, in my experience and my opinion, you know, the, the skill of figuring out the solution, right? Again, that's not a coding problem. That's a, that's a creativity and, and, and sort of vision sort of problem is, Hey, they have this particular problem. What would a, a perfect solution to that look like, right? How would it work and laying out how it worked? Like your mock-ups should be the first thing you do, not your code. So again, and again, I, I, I truly believe that when you identify who you want to help and you really care about those people, that's going to just start happening for you. Then you bring in the code. Then you write the application. Then the languages matter. But it's all secondary to this idea of problem solving. So that's my take on the, the question that you have here, what I think is missing. So Hopefully that gives you a, a little bit better insight into to how to tackle this and to realize it's not learning more code isn't going to solve this problem. You have to answer that fundamental question of who you want to help for yourself. That's what's going to get you over this hump. All right. Well, if you like this episode, be sure to hit the like button. If you subscribe, if you haven't, so you can get all notified of all future videos. Uh, also, if you want all the links to subscribe to the audio version over on iTunes, Android, TuneIn, all that, you can find that at johnmorrisshow.com along with all the past episodes of the show. Finally, if you'll rate and review the podcast over on iTunes, I'd greatly appreciate that. I will also give you module one of my PHP 101 course for free. All the instructions for that, you head on over to johnmorrisshow.com and then click on the start here link at the top. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.